Welcome to the Entrepreneur Show. Today's guest is Rosanna Calambicis, president of Big Chef Catering and Big Chef Online. I am Heidi Richards Mooney, founder of Women in E-Commerce and host of the Entrepreneur Show. And it is my pleasure to bring to you today's program. Let me tell you about today's special guest. According to Rosanna, experience and travel, these are an education in themselves, taught Euripides, the Greek playwright. The doctrine is fundamental to her ultimate success. Rosanna's drive to become a successful entrepreneur began as a young girl, a Brazilian native raised in the metropolis of Sao Paulo. She obtained her degree in family law at PUCSP. Believing in education beyond the classroom, she traveled, residing in Cali, Colombia, and Angola, Africa. In 1991, she moved to Florida. Ultimately, her understanding of different cultures enhanced her knowledge of international business and fed her appreciation of world cuisine. Inspired by her mother's accomplishments as an award-winning chef and published cookbook author and her father's successful attitude and leadership, Rosanna decided to combine her business expertise and food interests with Mono Calambicis, her partner, restaurant, and people experience, leading to the acquisition of Big Chef in November 2003. By 2004, she obtained an MBA in global business management at University of Phoenix in Fort Lauderdale. Rosanna firmly believes in integrating with the community. The outgoing entrepreneur has taken on leadership roles in numerous organizations as well as sponsored several events around the globe. From 2015 to 2019, Rosanna was president of Women in E-Commerce. She selected for the first pathway of prosperity in the Americas in Washington, D.C., one of four Americans among women entrepreneurs from 14 countries. She has been recognized with many awards from NABO to the Greater Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce to Broward Alliance and more. Rosanna's passion for dining extends beyond work to her professional life, making entertaining guests a favorite pastime. In addition to creating tasty treats, with her son, Felipe, and her husband and partner, Mano, she continues to travel, enjoys golf, and strolling along the beach. And living in Florida, why not? Welcome, Rosanna. Thank you, thank you, Heidi. Well, of course, you and I are personal friends. We've known each other for several years. I think I met you when you first came to Florida, and I think it was one of the, it definitely was a day that changed my life much for the better and i thank you very much for not only being so supportive of women and the community but me and our organization and all that we do as women entrepreneurs so thank you rosanna thank you thank you thank so i would you, like Ryan. to of course i would like you to tell our audience about your company because you know there's just no time to say everything in an introduction and i think coming from you would be much better so let people know a little bit about your company and what it does both your companies because i know you have more than one okay thank you it's my pleasure being here and the sisterhood that we have is just like a blessing since last millennium um big chef is a food company usda and fda inspected we are also a full service catering company We've been delighting pallets in South Florida since 1999, and we also ship e-commerce nationwide. Yes, you do. So you manufacture yes. food, you deliver it nationwide, and you also cater, correct? Yes, it's you correct. If you make it, might as well serve. Right. So, uh, and we have a huge variety of items from breakfast items and desserts to desserts. So we have salads and sandwiches and mainly hors d'oeuvres, canapés, entrees, uh, sushi, dips, uh, cakes. So it's uh, like a huge kitchen with different uh, small kitchens inside within. And you're, you're um, I, want to, I don't know if what you call it, if it's a, a plant or a warehouse or, or a factory, because it's really more than that. It's almost like you go into someone's home. It's very inviting. You have a nice area to greet people, and then you have all the people in the back doing all the things that they do to make your business run like a, just so beautifully. And um, it's a great tour. I hope if any of you are in South Florida, when you start doing tours again, uh, that we can we can plan one of those because I think that it's such a um, not only inspiring I 
think that it's enlightening for people to really see a behind the scenes of what goes on in in different businesses and in particular a business like yours where you know everything you do first of all is very perishable so let's talk a little bit about that because it is uh tell us about how how your business was prior to COVID-19 and how COVID-19 has impacted not only your business but obviously the hospitality the entertainment the you know food service business in general well prior to COVID we were rocking uh, Big Chef was established in 1999. So after 20 years in business, you've already know and you have a repeated clientele and you can plan ahead and you've already developed uh, the, the relationships and the reports, not only with your clients, but also with providers and suppliers. Not to mention your staff that I have a very high retention ratio for this industry because I, uh, we bond and I make them feel comfortable. And it's not only their staff, but also their families. that are uh, part of us, uh, of us, like a big family, big chef family. So as I mentioned before, we're rocking. March is a very strong month for our industry. In addition to the um, major sports events and concerts and festival, we have the daily operation. So, we got the orders and we got ready. Um, in fact, I had just arrived from Europe in February and by then COVID-19 was spreading very fast there. And I'm very proactive. So I stopped into Big Chef, which is a facility, which is a manufacturing plant. Um, and immediately I implement what I call the C protocol. So I've intensified the sanitation processes and procedures and also I start taking the temperature from my staff and everybody stepping into the company since February and I kept a log of it and I closed my doors so nobody could come inside Big Chef and we're just, um, just the delivery the suppliers and we take the temperature or my staff will take. So I'm thinking we self-contained because the well-being and health of my staff is number one. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. taking care of this first, I could take care of my clients. We reconfirmed all the orders. We made the request of the raw ingredients and we prepared. So we built the inventory and we were just getting ready. So um, uh, when they declared, when they decided to do the shutdown, and within 24 hours, I lost 10, 20, 30, 40, all the orders. And you have to understand, I have a relatively large facility. So all my freezers were full with the product and my coolers with the raw ingredient for fresh product. It takes a lot of planning, preparation in my industry to be able to provide for all the clients and have everything done. So not only I lost the orders, but I had to take care of my suppliers and uh, my providers and my staff that worked. So it was just like a bucket of ice that was being poured over me, thinking what to do with all of this, because uh, if it's shut down, nobody's going to uh, order, there's no parties, there's no events. So um, the number one thing was my staff, because they are part of our company. Okay, and I impact many lives and their families. So um, the first thing I did is I've decided to lay them off because I have no work. So I said, I'm not gonna furlough you because I don't know tomorrow. I am not firing you either, but I need to make sure you are okay so I can think. You know, I can breathe and I can think. So I put my managers, I did not lay off everybody, uh, the people in salary I kept. And I put my managers to able to assist them in processing uh, their paperwork. So luckily enough, they were just in the beginning because I act uh, quickly and they all qualify and they all start collecting. So as I took care of my staff, I could breathe. If I could breathe, I could think. So I'm like, okay, now let's tap into survival mode. Okay, everybody is. So I composed a very nice letter email and saying, uh, the big chef looking for people to feed and I send it out and I try to think outside the box and seeing possibility of um, 
you know, uh, that would be running or people that would need that regardless. So first responders, media, seniors, and I send out the email to key people hoping that they could, uh, you know, knock a door for me or give me a name, just a reference name. And lucky enough, we were able to get an opportunity to provide seniors for the Broward County. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So immediately I brought the, my people. It was interesting. The first thing I had to do, because since we used to do with events and high end, I'm used to have micro greens and the food from the fresh market. And now I'm dealing volume with a simpler meal. So which is the first thing we did is to hire a purchaser that was able to buy a different things. And I brought my staff back and I'm calling everybody and they, they came back immediately. I had no issue, perhaps because the same way I took care of them in the beginning, they were able to you know, take care of us and they were there immediately. So they came back to work and we gave the same. Um, so we start rolling again, the lights were on and we were closed for, I don't know, a couple of weeks until we had the contract done and approved. So an opportunity came out our way. But you had the foresight and the vision to be able to think ahead where a lot, I think a lot of people at that time thought, oh, this too shall pass. It'll last a couple of weeks, three or four weeks. We don't need to do anything. And I know a lot of businesses who, because they didn't, um, uh, Re, not react because reacting is what you do when it's a negative situation, but you know, proactively come Proactive. up with something to do that would keep them in business. You see, in, especially in your business, um, I'm in a business that is similar in that the floral business, you know, it's not a necessity. It's not one of those businesses that's going to stay open when everything is shutting down. I've just been very fortunate that I've got clients who are, you know, we, we have big companies like you, you know, you're not delivering just one or two meals at a time, you're delivering hundreds. And so when it impacted you, it was like impacting a big hotel or a restaurant because you had a lot of people you depended on to stay in business as, as they depended on you to supply them with the food and the ingredients and the things that they needed to serve their clients. So I applaud you for being so proactive. I know we had those conversations early, early March of the things that you were going to do. And, and I think that um, I'm just so excited that it, it was successful for you in that it, it kept your doors open, you know, and you didn't have yes, to thank you, close thank down. You. So, yes. so, so what else did you do to pivot? to you know to change your business model so that um you could keep those doors open and keep those people employed well uh our industry the hospitality industry the entertainment industry got crushed okay mm -hmm. we don't hit hard we we still are we just uh, um got crushed so um the way that i thought which again is the key the key word is proactive is my people being healthy I just have to find the people to eat, basically, to find guests to eat. So I have to retrain them. It's so interesting because they had used to do elaborated hors d'oeuvres, elaborated kind of pet, and using the tools and their fingers. And suddenly I'm just like, you know, scooping uh, those things just to understand that they were having a sloppy jaw to say something. And they were molding the potato to put under all this here so we look pretty. And I'm like, no, we have to consider volume. So uh, it's interesting. So I have to retrain my people to be able to put in the mindset that we have to do volume. I, I had no more freezer space because you see large orders for the tennis tournaments and so on. They are large orders for us. Right. So I had the, no, my, and my freezer were full and nobody was getting your dirt and so on. So we had to convert one of our production room into a freezer to be able to store this. Wow. Then I had to consider, yes. And as they were doing this here, they could not, I need the volume, okay, to break even point. I need the high volume to break right. even. So they had an issue with the, the, the scheduling. So I have stepped up to the plate and I said, please let me run, run the scheduling. Let me run the routes. And my, my staff, my right hand says, 
but I don't even have a program for routes. And I said, it's okay. It's just a spreadsheet. Send me an Excel, three clicks. We reorganize an Excel and with that's it. Becomes here, four clicks, takes four clicks. So I, I, wrote, I believe I simplify things to them, which makes easier. At the end of the day, it's just food. It doesn't matter what they are eating. Uh, but I think the, the, the care, attention, and dedication that we put into a well-elaborated herbs is the same that we put into a very simple meal. In other words, I share the passion for food creation with my team. Well, and it's interesting that you said how you had to retrain them because, you know, I don't think, I think some companies don't think outside the box that maybe we should simplify our, our, our menu or maybe we should come up with the top five things that will be better serving our clients or top three or whatever it happens to be. And it could be also a, a service business, not just a, a, a products-based business where um, instead of trying to be all things to all people or to, you know, have a, maybe a large menu, when you simplify, sometimes it, it also takes pressure off the people because now they're like, oh, not just the staff, but the people who want to support you. Oh, that's what they do. That's so much easier because obviously we're not having parties. So if we're not having parties, we're not ordering hors d'oeuvres. And if you think about it, the people who need those packaged meals that are that have you know the right ingredients and the right proportion of 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 the nutrients that they need doesn't often include those beautiful canapes and hors d'oeuvres because they'd have to have too many of them in order to get that, that type of thing. So I can see, and I know how your people are, and I know they're all artists. They're all, yeah. they all take such great pride in everything that they do. So I'm sure that they are taking pride in now uh, recreating and reinventing themselves. And you, so you've given them something really valuable as a lesson in how to, you know, if you think about it, they can translate that to their home life. Look, they can say, oh, Rosanna showed me a simple way to do this. How can I make life simpler at home too? You know. Yeah, well, and I, I train them also how to be safe and their families. So I'm very proud to say that we are ready in September and we haven't had no one case directly, indirectly related to Big Chef of oh. anybody with COVID. Mm -hmm. So this That's is huge. Uh, very good, huge, huge. Yes. Uh, and another thing that I've learned now that we started with the news for seniors, I came up with a new menu of a vegetarian for seniors. So oh, we have an really? alternative options to be able to, to get into this. And the way we get into our old clients in the hospitality industry, the small one that is slowly opening and they also have their whole staff and furlough. So they just have a key uh, chef there and slowly gradually and restarted. So we have offered to uh, custom make items for them. So I'll work with the chefs, with the recipes and the restaurants, and I'll make an item that is a volume for them until they can pick up again. So it's a way not to bring somebody in part-time and here, but is able to maintain the consistency and the quality that they are used to. So we've got a couple of them also. Well, that's wonderful because now you're providing another service that might end up being a long-term solution for some business who, who may not want to necessarily go back to the old way of doing business because i think that that's what's coming up with 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 all that this has happened uh what do you what do you think how this will impact your industry in terms of the changes that you have made do you think they're going to be short term or long term how do you think that people are going to do business with you now that as things start to move forward and open up and you gave a great um, example yes yes i'm I think it's going to have a more uh, smaller events because I think if people get used to it, you cannot stop your life until you have a vaccine. You have to start living your life and adapting right. to whatever is present. So um, I had the weddings that I'm having the first event tomorrow, Friday here in Hollywood. Okay, of course, it's a smaller event. And the cute thing is that they have uh, two hours. So they have six to eight guests and eight to 10 guests. Oh, wow. So to be able to break, very interesting. I thought it was a, you know, it was a brilliant idea. Of course, I came up with a new protocol. I don't know if you saw on social media. 
the 2020 new protocol. So when you host an event, how to put like, the chairs apart, the paper apart, try to create your own way to greet your guests without touching them. I have uh, these things there. So uh, all these things, I believe we're gonna have a more smaller event happening. Um, I also launched because I believe the, the Zoom and the virtual will still continue heavy, heavily. So I also launched the um, virtual party catering, still locally, so I'm able to provide these boxes, depending on the time, or lunch boxes or other box and so on. And I'm able to deliver within two hours time frame in Broward County. So everybody, when you have the Zoom, everybody can do it together. Uh, and enjoy the same year or enjoy this year, something, you know, you have to, you have this to oh, be yeah. created. Well, and you know what, you mentioned that, and the Davy Cooper City Chamber, of which I am a member, uh, they're doing something similar, and you may, I, are you a member of the Davy Cooper City Chamber? No, I'm not, I'm not. Well, they do a box lunch where you can, you can, you register on their web, and then you place your order, and then they have it delivered to your home, so you do these virtual lunches. So that sounds like what you're talking about, and I was going to mention to you, I think that's a brilliant idea, and yeah. it's forward thinking, and it's keeping your audience engaged, which I think is so important, and also keeping your employees uh, busy doing what they love to do come to work every day. Working. This year, yeah. I, this is a matter of this, you know, this year is a matter of uh, reinventing yourself, adapting, surviving, and enjoy this beautiful South Florida. Oh, absolutely. What's been the most surprising thing, do you think, that has come out of this for you and your business through all this, um, you know, global challenges we've been often facing? Uh, it's interesting how you can be um, you can find pleasure in the little things. Yeah. It is, uh, you know, so which is, um, I've still, I maintain, it's interesting because I keep a, a thermometer with me, all oh, this since February, as I mentioned. So I've seen my friends, but I carry the thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Great but not in many groups. So we have <laughs> smaller groups, but it's yeah. so funny because you have more time for them and you enjoy it. And the, you know, the walk with your husband at the end of the day or just around here. And so I think it is the pleasure and the simpler things of life. I think this is the best what it is. Um, and also the people, my mom, I haven't, because she's in Brazil right. and I have not spoken to her. I mean, I have not seen her, but I call her every day. And for her, she's feeling like she's a teenager again, because she, <laughs> she had the custom made the dresses with the mask matching. Oh, so wow. she's waiting nice. for the invitations to go showcase. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You I know, it. so it's just like each one is coming up with a different way. So, um, and of course, I've improved the, you know, the hobbies you end up improving your skills too because you have more free time. So, oh, that's so funny. You got it. Your mother and I are a lot alike because I am, you know, me, I'm five foot three. So, everything I buy is always too long. So, as I cut the hems, I've been making masks to go with my dresses. Mm -hmm. So, it's funny. I've, I've only bought a couple of things because I'm not going anywhere. But the couple of things I bought uh, for the two events my husband and I have been to um, over the, in the last couple of weeks, they, I, I made matching masks and everybody like, oh, wow, that's really cool. So, you know, uh, but if you're tall, you can't do that. You can just buy material and hope it matches. Anyway, there are so many beautiful masks out there. It's, it's amazing the creativity that people have come up with uh, during this time. And instead of sitting around saying, oh, poor me, they're really taking this on as a new opportunity. And, you know, personally, I think a lot of people, you know, you, you, you would think maybe the divorce rate might go higher, but I think that it's a chance for us to get to know one another again. Because, you know, where our lives are so busy, think about you and Mono. I mean, you, you work together, you are home together, you entertain together, your lives are so entwined more than a lot of couples because of the fact that you own a business together. So this is probably not a big deal for you because you're so used to already being together. But now being together means not being with all those other people that are, you're totally surrounded with all the time. So how has it really affected? I'm sure it's been a, 
a great thing for you. You can tell us the good stuff. <laughs> it, is, it is. It is. It is. Well, we've been playing like family night. We play cards. Um, you know, my herbal garden is getting beautiful in the house. My piano skills are improving. You know, so it is the manual and planning. My Philip is fishing. So it's a lot of good things, a lot of good things. And family time is, has improved tremendously. That's you know, just the ability to have the, the luxury or having the free time at the same time. Yeah. You see, yeah. because usually when my son was free or he doesn't have something, I have an invitation, I have an event to go. So like this, just to being together, it was just like very nice. It's a pleasure. It's been it's so a joy. So tell us about what you love most about what you do. Um, you see, now that we're making, let's consider now that we're making the meals for the seniors uh, in the community. Um, a lot of them make the phone call, okay? They are not um, computer savvy. And I've received so many phone calls. One of them, I'm so proud to share. The lady was just, Leah, your food is so tasty that I took out my ta a tablecloth and my china to enjoy it better. Oh. This is, for me, this is like priceless. Um, usually, my answer would be, which is the truth, uh, uh, since we provide the meals for events for get-togethers for parties for all special occasion so uh we make money when people celebrate so this is like it's a happy profit you know so this is kind of uh enjoyed when when you do things that you like and you see there is a pleasure in eating and people appreciate what they receive okay either the canapé the the dessert or the meal, you know? So uh, the customer appreciate the food, they appreciate the, the care and the love that you put into it. So this is priceless. Well, I can tell you that I know firsthand how great your food is. And I honestly have to say that I appreciate any food that is made for me that I don't have to make myself. <laughs> so and I'm not a bad cook. My husband always tells me I'm a good cook, but I have to be in the mood and that's rare. You know, one day a week I figure out what I'm going to make. So my challenge has been, personal challenge has been to try to do one new uh, recipe a week. I'm not good. I haven't done it every week, but pretty much every other week I try one new recipe and just, it's just fun. And it's just the two of us. So, you know, that's a challenge too, when you're only cooking for two. So what you provide is wonderful because it can be for just one or 100 or 1000. Right. And I know you've done it for a thousand and more. Yeah. Um, so with such a busy and fulfilling career and personal life, Rosanna, how do you find time to give back to the community? I know, you, you know, when we read your bio, that was just the tip of the iceberg of all the things that you do and have done in the community. But there, you have to have some sort of secret or some sort of system or s what is it that, that drives you that you can find the time? Because you have to find the time, really, with your busy schedule. Right, right. Um, we are part of the community. We contribute and we impact the local economy. To be involved is to care. So when, at the end of the day, is a giver's gain. Mm -hmm. uh, recently they asked me, how do I feel helping the community providing affordable meals for seniors? And um, my answer was, you know, uh, we are the one being helped because in times mm -hmm. like this, it is assisting big chef to maintain the stability. So it's just, uh, uh, it's a natural. I think he being involved in the community is just a natural. It's just, you know, just care for where you live. Well, and I think any business that wants to stay around for the long term needs to give back and be a part of the community. You can see it from the, the most, the richest person in the world to the, the one with the one, one person show, the solopreneur. Um, the ones that I see that last are the ones that are constantly giving back, but you give back in ways that I, a lot of people like go, wow, how does she do that? She's involved in this group and that group, and she helps this group and she does things for that group. What is, what, what do you love? I mean, I know you love the fact that 
you're, you're helping a lot of people, but if you could pick one group that you really love to serve outside of the ones that you serve through Big Chef, what would you say would be that group or that, that um, demographic of people? Heidi, Heidi I do not have uh, any specific one. You see, I work with food. So I receive a lot of requests, a lot of requests, because every meeting goes food. Every meeting, right, right. you know, there's food involved. So uh, it's always constantly asked, because I even have one I said, that past performance now represent my future commitment. You know, so I just uh, choose as they come and I'll select them on a quarterly basis, the one that I will be a part of. Okay. Um, that is something that I like is related to women entrepreneur because I believe as the women grow, she will assist the community or the tap into the economic and the economy and exponentially. We'll find the time to help a friend, to talk to the mother, to care for swam, to get this, to donate, to buy something, to shop for a dress, to be able to buy a gift for somebody, to listen to the other one crying. So we just find time for everything. And the nothing against the boys, but the boys will provide money and that they contribute with the money and we find the time for this. So there is, I have a little soft spot for this. Um, and also the ones that is educational because I believe that if you can teach somebody something, you know, they will pay it forward, that they will do a positive impact. But uh, to pick one group, I do not have a one. I'm pretty involved in the Alliance for many, many years. Uh, and several different organizations there, um, you know, the women in e-commerce, I'm a women executive club, uh, but it's just um, one of many of them, you know. Well, you answered my question because I would have said women in general, because, and probably business as the bigger picture, that you want to support business, especially small business, helping them grow and things like that, because you're a mentor to a lot of people. So I think that um, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I know just from knowing you for the last 20 years, what you do for the community. And it's not just about women, but I think you might have a little soft spot because you're a woman entrepreneur, right? Yeah, I mean, we yeah. all do. I, I mean, I don't think we can help it ourselves, you know. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, well diversified. You see, I learned the lesson. I taught providing to convention centers and stadiums and private planes and yachts and country clubs and offices, corporations, residences and ship online, I was diversified. I thought providing from breakfast to adults to dessert, we were diversified. And I learned that we're not. No. Okay, so no, because every time that uh, our meals were meant for special occasions for getting together, so this is what I've learned, uh, and it's okay, which is good, you know, we got to continuously learning something. So um, I think in my, uh, my goal is to be well diversified. Right now, I somehow going to continue in the meals, uh, continues with events, continues with this year, and perhaps find a retail item. You know, I still got to explore. Uh, for the end of the year, beginning of next year, I will try to tap into other segments of the industry. But for five years ago, would be for the diversification. On a personal level, actually business related, I think I'd like to start with providing shares to key of my staff, shares of the company, wow. so I can plan to work part time. Well, <laughs> yes, you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Absolutely. I know I'm at that point where I'm really, you know, I'm working about 25, 30 hours a week now. And anything I work beyond that is because I choose to, not because I have to. And I really love it. And I think that when you get to that place where you don't have to, you enjoy it even more. And I've, and like you, I've always enjoyed and loved what I do. I love especially working with women and helping women and seeing women, uh, uh, you know, blossom and evolve um, and pivot when they have to. You know, I've, I, a lot of my friends like you have uh, done amazing things through this whole, um, 
I have a client who's also a friend and she's a Reiki instructor and a spiritual uh, guru and uh, just, she's just in a very spiritual woman. And I have seen her blossom and grow more during this COVID-19 than she probably had in the last five years because she really didn't have to so much. You know, she was, it was kind of like we were, I think a lot of the world was kind of at a status quo. Everything was going along, you know, every day was every day. And now it was like, almost like a rebirth for many people. You know, I know it has impacted a lot of people negatively. So I just want to call attention to the people that it has impacted in a positive and beautiful way that they have been able to take advantage of you know, this opportunity in our life that we may, hopefully we never see again, and nobody has ever seen, and, you know, have really turned it around to something positive and beautiful and meaningful like you have. So thank you, Rosanna, for, for doing that and being an inspiration to so many people. And I know a lot of your staff, and I know they're never leaving you. They yeah, will no, not. They just you know. That's why it would be okay yeah. to, you know, share with them, to yeah. distribute some share to them as a rewarding. Yeah, yes. because you've built the loyalty and the fact that you've been loyal to them. And I think that's so important in business today. So any last thoughts? Um, yes, I think so. But especially in a situation like this, you see, we went through hurricane, we went through recessions uh, and all these things. So what, uh, what I would say is whatever, whatever life throws our way, assess the situation and decide quickly act upon act on your decision as if it was the best and only choice and trust it will be you will become stronger and you handle any situation successfully absolutely what's the best way for our listeners to get in touch with you Oh, I'm very accessible. You can find me on all the social media, Rosanna Callum Beaches, Big Chef Online, Big Chef Catering. You can send me an email at rs at bigchefonline.com or call the company 954-965-2480. Woohoo! Say that one more time, 954-965-2480. Excellent. And when we, when we do the wrap up of this, I'll make sure that I put that in the notes so everybody can see it. Thank you, Rosanna, for being with us today. You are, you're, you're one of my favorite people. You're always an inspiration to me and um, I feel like we're sisters. So I appreciate your taking time today to, to do this, uh, this show with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to our audience, I want to say thank you for listening to the entrepreneur show and be sure and stay tuned for our next show featuring Audrey Ori. She is CEO of 13 and Joan Media and founder of the 100 Seats of Promise Literary Initiative. We have some amazing women doing amazing things in our global community. And I'm just so honored and delighted that I'm able to showcase people like, like the next guest and our guest today, Rosanna Santos. Callum Beaches from Big Chef Online, Big Chef Catering. Thank you, Rosanna, again, for being with us today. Bye-bye, everyone.